Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 15th, 2021, recorded on 1.52 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a tropical depression or storm to form in the Gulf of Mexico over the next two days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a while look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we notice a couple of things here. We have Tropical Storm Bill, which is now, again, a tropical storm. 60 mile per hour winds moving off towards the north and east here at about 40 miles per hour. So this is rapidly moving towards the northeast. And this is expected to become a post-tropical cyclone later today. So this is not really any much more of a concern. Again, this will be moving uh, eventually into Atlantic Canada here in Nova Scotia. But other than that, uh, this is no threat really, uh, you know, for the United States. And, you know, of course, this will be a problem, you know, mainly for Atlantic Canada at that point. And then we also have Tropical Wave Invest Area 94L, which is down here in the Tropical Atlantic. Not really expected to see any significant organization over this uh, over the next five days. Uh, from this particular system, you notice that it's just the sheer size and large Saharan air plume to the north of it. will get entrained into the center of circulation with this thing and will likely end up just kind of falling apart out here in the cooler waters of the Tropical Atlantic out here. And then our main disturbance, Invest Area 92L, which now has an 80% chance of developing over the next five days as it moves northward somewhere in the western or central Gulf of Mexico. And this will be posing a land concern over the next several days. So this is where we're going to spend most of our time focusing on uh, for right now. Again, real quickly looking at the uh, Tropical Storm Bill, again, expected to become post-tropical by later today. No real threat to land. Again, this will be a post-tropical remnant circulation by the time it gets up here to Atlantic Canada. So no problems there. Again, taking a real quick look at the satellite presentation, it does look a lot better, but uh, it did look a lot better. But now that strong vertical wind shear coming out of the southwest, blowing all the storms to the north and east. And now you can see this mainly devoid circulation in the cooler waters. So this is well on its way to becoming a post-tropical cyclone now as it is moving further away from the Gulf Stream. Looking at Invest Area 92L, again, 80% development chances over the next five days. And again, it's going to be somewhere within this area from the western Gulf of Mexico through maybe even portions of eastern Louisiana where we may have to deal with a landfalling tropical depression or storm somewhere in this vicinity uh, over the next five days. And again, it's very important to kind of keep in mind that this hatched area is basically anywhere where the tropical uh, cyclone may end up developing. So it could develop on the far eastern end, develop here in the center or the far western end and go subsequently somewhere uh, within that area. So again, it's just kind of important to mind that there is a lot of track potential right now that we could be dealing with as this is still a rather complicated setup. But look here at the visible satellite. What we'll notice is that we do have an area of concentrated vorticity that has developed uh, last night in through this afternoon. This concentrated area of vorticity is sitting offshore of the Mexican coastline, which is right here. And again, this is the Yucatan Peninsula right here. But this area of disturbed weather and this area of low pressure has now consolidated and it is staying offshore for the time being. Now, current indications are that, again, this is still a large gyre that is still rotating in this area. Again, it's not really moved much over the last several days because it's just been pinned basically down here in this vicinity. Now, what is possible is that, again, this area of low pressure could still slip into Mexico here and eventually rotate northward back out over the tropical waters here of the Gulf of Mexico over the next five days. And it will be very interesting to see whether or not that actually does or doesn't happen. Again, there is some model confliction here, which we'll talk about there in a moment. But this consolidated area of low pressure does have some shower and thunderstorm activity with it. Now, most of the thunderstorm activity right now is over Mexico. And because of that, we do have some dry air influence over Mexico being pulled into this area of low pressure. Because, again, the land is going to have some drier air, usually. And that drier, more stable air is being pumped into this area of low pressure, which means we can't get really a deep area of consolidated, uh, you know, thunderstorm activity right now at the moment. Once it starts to move northward, though, and gets away from the land influence, this will start to be when we have the better shot at tropical cyclone formation as this begins to move northward really by tomorrow and slowly evects northward for the next couple of days here. If we look at water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico in this exact area, water temperatures are fairly warm right now at about 28 to 29 Celsius. And water temperatures pretty much remain 
background, the, the background state remains very favorable. The water temperatures remain fairly high uh, for this area. And again, water temperatures even in the northern Gulf now are sitting roughly about 29, even some 30 Celsius right up against the shelf waters. And because of that, again, this should have no problem in the sea surface temperature department. Uh, we can see that there is some cooler sea surface temperatures out here right off the Florida Gulf Coast and off the Florida Peninsula. These water temperatures are, are still about 28 Celsius, so not really much of a concern there. And the bigger thing that we're looking for is the upper ocean heat content. Again, this is the upper ocean heat content map updated as of this morning. And what we notice here, again, just real quickly, these lighter blue colors towards the right of the scale, that is basically towards warmer colors here. This is your higher upper ocean heat content. Basically, tropical cyclones up well cooler water at the depth when they move over a body of, of water. And if you have high upper ocean heat content, which is what the warmer colors represent, it only upwells, or it really only upwells the warmer water at the depth. So what we can kind of focus in on here is, again, this area, which has some fairly respectable upper ocean heat content for June 15th. And again, this area is filled in with some, you know, light blue, even kind of some of that uh, very faint green color is starting to show up in that area. And what that indicates to me is that there is an increasing upper ocean heat content environment through this entire region. So sea surface temperatures and upper ocean heat content does get a check. Now, it's not as warm as some of these areas out here, especially in the Caribbean, in the Central Gulf, in this warm uh, loop eddy right here, this uh, loop current. However, for the most part, the, these water temperatures are still fairly warm and the sea surface temperature environment does kind of shape up to be fairly substantial, which means that, again, this tropical disturbance moving northward is going to upwell warmer water and not quickly uh, overturn the water temperatures in that area. Now, if we look here at Invest Area 94L, again, 94L does have a chance over the next five days, but very limited, only a 10% chance. Again, this is now passing... Uh, to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands and will continue moving off towards the west-northwest over the next couple of days and eventually start to significantly gain latitude after that time in which, again, it's going to encounter more hostile conditions that are waiting for it to the north here. If we look here at the visible satellite imagery, we notice that, again, one of the things that has been hindering this system is any well-established convection. We do have some developing today uh, but it's just frankly not going to be enough for tropical cyclogenesis chances. Again, very dry, stable air kind of all to the north of this is going to get pulled into the system. And because of that, this is likely to not have much of a chance with genesis chances at the moment. And I, I think really because of that, again, we're, we're probably on life support for 94L right now. Now, again, not saying there's a 0% chance, but effectively... Genesis chances have uh, waned significantly from what we were thinking about yesterday even. So uh, again, we'll continue to monitor 94L. Again, its area of low pressure is right here. But again, dry, stable air to the north and cooler sea surface temperatures are, is going to be the main hindering threat over the next couple of days for any Genesis chances. Now getting to the models today, this is the 12 GFS forecast for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Again, what we'll notice is that we do have that concentrated area of vorticity sitting off the Mexican coastline on the GFS forecast. And that has been very prevalent over the last several days. I believe this is what the h wharf was showing too, except the only problem is the h wharf hasn't updated in a couple of days uh, just because it's really too hard to pinpoint an, an exact area right now for uh, initialization. Now, over the next couple of days, again, we'll notice that this area of low pressure does eventually move inland over Mexico. And now, does this happen or not? If this doesn't happen and we can get this in an area of low pressure to eventually move northward and it's more consolidated, we could be looking at potentially a stronger system out here in the Gulf of Mexico. However, the general consensus is that, again, we have a tropical wave uh, that yesterday was over the Lesser Antilles here. This tropical wave is moving rapidly over towards the west and eventually will get slingshotted around the Yucatan Peninsula on this larger gyre, and that's what seems to be developing here. Now, the GFS is a little bit less uh, consistent in terms of where it wants the placement of this. So really, uh, the placement could really go anywhere from Texas through Louisiana here and even into far western Mississippi we could be dealing with the impacts for, for a wide range of areas. And if we look here at the GFS forecast, 
and the 10 meter winds in this area, what we'll notice is that we have a broad fetch of southerly winds here. And what this is going to do, basically, this is basically just going to pile in uh, a lot of tropical moisture and it could it have some uh, adverse in, impacts in terms of storm surge pressure down to 1003 millibars so this does suggest that we could be getting into the tropical storm range however if we look at the moisture field in the mid levels of the atmosphere what's very interesting here again this has more of a subtropical look than anything with most of your convection focused on the eastern and northern sides of this you can see all this moist air all the way even over to portions of the western florida peninsula and this is because it's going to be mainly an easterly weighted system. We're not going to be having much of centralized convection in this case. Now, again, this all depends whether or not we are able to get this consolidated area of low pressure to actually stay over water. And if it does so, I think we could be dealing with a slightly stronger system uh, than the GFS is modeling. Eventually, though, this will be pretty much moving uh, inland and then up and towards the right here and then potentially we would have to watch for genesis chances maybe once again out in the gulf stream this would be something that we'd have to watch very carefully over the next several days because it is possible that that does happen but anything i think that does develop would probably be moving away from the united states at this point now the gfs forecast for the ensemble mean sea level pressure will kind of run this forward again just to kind of give you an idea that there is a wide range of possibilities that could still uh be coming from this. We could see anywhere from a mid-range tropical storm to a low-end tropical depression uh, and just a big rainmaker, but you can see the placement. Each of these red numbers here is a potential area of low pressure and storm that is indicated on the GFS uh, ensembles, and we can see that really uh, the wide range here stretches all the way really uh, from, the, from portions of Texas all the way through portions of Louisiana and extreme western Mississippi. So no one is necessarily out of the ballpark yet. And I do think that we will be dealing with a slug of tropical moisture, which we can actually look at here on the precipital water anomalies here. We notice that we have a large slug of tropical moisture being uh, dumped across portions of the Gulf Coast here. And again, this is going into areas that have had a very saturated environment over the last several weeks. And this could only add to cause more of a substantial flooding problem than we have seen in, in recent weeks. So because of this, there is some high alert here that even if we have a weak low-end depression or storm in this area within uh, by Saturday, this is indicated here by about uh, 8 a.m. on Saturday, we could be dealing with a tremendous flooding problem. And that is something certainly that this area of the Gulf Coast does not need flooding problems. And again, the last thing they need right now is a tropical disturbance to be moving their way. But just keep in mind that it is the potential there. Now, I don't think we'll be dealing with a hurricane, but I do believe that we could be seeing maybe somewhat of a stronger tropical storm. Just depends on the exact placement of where that look consolidated low actually goes so far. If we look here at the 200 millibar winds in the atmosphere, what we can actually see is that, again, we have a very unfavorable environment. We actually start with a pretty favorable environment right now over the next couple of days. And this is the reason why I do believe that things will kind of, again, increase in activity and we will likely see something form in this area. But after that point, what we'll notice is that, again, the wind direction starts to change as we get an upper level anticyclone to develop over uh, the Yucatan here. And because of that, now we've changed our wind direction uh, to the southwest here. And then eventually we get some pretty strong upper level winds that build up around this upper level anticyclone and we get strong vertical wind shear that ends up occurring over this area, which will likely prevent significant organization. And this will be also responsible for bringing an easterly weighted system to somewhere across the Gulf Coast. So I don't expect this to be very strong, but again, a stronger system now in the short term means a stronger system across the Northern Gulf Coast. And again, if we continue to see that we don't really have uh, the surface low move inland, and in fact, it just kind of meanders here and eventually moves northward, and this is the primary surface low. If that's true, then we could be dealing with a slightly stronger system as it would be more apt to overcome the influence of the uh, wind shear across this area. So we'll just have to kind of keep that in mind uh, over the next couple of days. The European model, for what it's worth, again, does bring a consolidated surface low somewhere uh, near the Texas-Louisiana border within the next 96 hours. This is by... Uh, 8 p.m. Friday night and then by Sunday this is by or really this is 8 p.m. on Saturday again our system is somewhere across here and just 
just to see if the 12Z models have kind of ran. They haven't really. But again, it just all kind of depends based on what we have in this environment over the next 24 hours if we get something very well established. European ensembles, again, real quickly, definitely calling for a system to form out here in this region. Again, wide range of impacts possible too in landfall points. Anywhere from, again, Texas through eastern Louisiana uh, is a possible landfall point at this point for whatever this ends up becoming, whatever 92L uh, ends up becoming. And you notice that there's not really anything out here associated with 94L, and this is the tracks here associated with a different system. But again, it just really matters. There's a lot that we maybe don't know yet, but again, we will be getting those answers over the next several days. And of course, I will be sticking on top of everything as we progress through the next several days. All right. Well, that's going to be it for today. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.